Here I've got a really nice integral that was suggested by a viewer. So it's known as Ahmed's integral. And I'm following a solution that you can find on the archive and it's posted below. So our final goal is the integral from zero to one of arctan of the square root of x squared plus two over the square root of x plus two times x squared plus one dx. And we're gonna do this by using some identities involving the inverse tangent, as well as these following two integrals, which we will derive. Although we will not derive the identities involving the inverse tangent, because just to keep this video a little shorter. So let's look at this first tool. So we wanna look at the integral from zero to one of one over the square root of x squared plus two times x squared plus one. So I've written that integral up here. So looking at this, you see this x squared plus one term in the denominator, which should maybe give you a hint to do trigonometric substitution. So let's see if that works. So let's let x equal tangent theta. That's the kind of trig substitution that you generally do when you see a term like x squared plus one. So that tells me that dx equals secant squared theta d theta, the derivative of tangent. But then x squared plus one, is also secant squared theta. So that means the secant squared from the dx and the secant squared from the x squared plus one are going to cancel. Furthermore, if x is equal to zero, that means that tangent of theta is equal to zero, which tells us that theta is zero. And then when x is equal to one, that tells me that tangent theta is equal to one. In other words, theta is equal to pi over four. Okay, good. So these are all of the parts necessary to appropriately change this from an integral involving x to an integral involving theta. So let's see what it looks like now. So we've got the integral from zero to pi over four. And then like I pointed out, the secant squared and the secant squared are gonna cancel. So we're left with d theta in the numerator. And in the, in the denominator, we'll have tangent squared theta plus two. Great. Now next I wanna use the kind of basic de defining property of tangent in that it is sine over cosine to multiply the numerator and the denominator by cosine. So that's gonna get rid of this tangent in the denominator and turn it into a sine. So let's see what that leaves us with. So that leaves us with the integral from zero to pi over four. We have cosine theta d theta in the numerator. And then in the denominator, well, this cosine is gonna come inside of the square root. And as it enters the square root, we have to square it. And there's no problem with the SIGN of anything happening here because we are on the interval zero to pi over four. So you don't really need to worry about that. But then when cosine is squared and multiplied to tangent, it will become sine squared. So we have sine squared theta. And then next, we'll have plus two times cosine squared theta. But I'm gonna write that as cos squared theta plus cos squared theta. Just break that two cosine squared theta into two pieces. And I do that so I can use the Pythagorean identity for sine. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this as one. So sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And then I'm gonna rewrite this term as one minus sine squared theta. So that's something I can do with both of those, again, using that Pythagorean identity. So let's see what that leaves me with. That leaves me with the integral from zero to pi over four of cosine theta d theta over the square root of two minus sine squared theta. Okay, great. So let's see, we've got one plus one minus sine squared theta. That's why that works. Now we're gonna do what I think is a pretty tricky substitution, but it really like hints at the fact that this integral was constructed and not really discovered because of how well this substitution works. So the substitution that we will make is sine theta equals the square root of two times sine of a new angle, which I'll call alpha. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. 
That means cosine theta d theta is equal to the square root of two times cosine alpha d alpha just by doing our derivative of both sides. Okay, and then let's see what happens inside there. So we've got this two minus sine squared theta. So that's gonna be equal to two minus two sine squared alpha, which is two cosine squared alpha. Okay, so after doing all of that, we see that this square root of two cosine alpha in the numerator that we get from this term right here. So let's write that out. All of this right here is square root of two cos alpha. And then all of this right here is the square root of two cos alpha. This one up here is attached to a d alpha. So everything in the numerator cancels with the denominator. And that leaves us with the integral of d alpha. But we have to figure out what the bounds of integration are. And that's a little bit tricky, but not too terrible. So notice if theta is equal to zero, then that means sine is equal to zero, which tells us that the square root of two times sine alpha is equal to zero, which tells us that alpha is also equal to zero. So our lower bound of integration is still zero. And notice when theta is equal to pi over four. So that tells us that sine of theta is one over the square root of two, which tells us that sine of alpha is one half. Really, we have one over the square root of two equals the square root of two times sine alpha, but if you divide out by the square root of two, you get a half. But that tells us that alpha equals pi over six. So we get our upper bound of integration is pi over six. So we're integrating from zero to pi over six of just d alpha. So that's just gonna give us the number pi over six, which was the first identity that we wanted to build. Now we're ready to look at our second integral identity. So that'll be the integral from zero to one of arctan of one over the square root of x squared plus two over the square root of x plus two times x squared plus one. And we're gonna use the following tool, which is like a standard result from maybe a first or a second semester calculus class. And it's really just the antiderivative of this object over here, but just evaluate it at some special places. So notice we can rewrite one over t, arctan of one over t, as the integral from zero to one of dy over t squared plus y squared. So we'll use this where t is equal to the square root of x squared plus two. So notice we've got a one over that value of t in the numerator, and then we have that value of t in the denominator, which is like multiplying by one over that value of t. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have the integral from zero to one, and then another integral from zero to one, and then one, over, so we've got t squared plus y squared, but t is this, so that's gonna be x squared plus y squared plus two times x squared plus one, and then we have dx dy like that. Next, we're gonna do a little bit of a trick, and that is we're gonna multiply by one half and by two. So that's like multiplying by one. But we're gonna multiply by two by separating this out into the integral plus itself. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we've got that this is one half times the integral from zero to one and zero to one of one over x squared plus y squared plus two, x squared plus one dx dy and then plus the same thing. So we've got this integral from zero to one, this integral from zero to one of, I'll write it like this, dx o dy over x squared plus y squared plus two, x squared plus one. Next, we're gonna take this first integral and then pull it apart using partial fraction decomposition. So I won't work out the details here. It's just some symbolic arithmetic. It's not too bad. But what that will give us is that this first integral decomposes into the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to one of one over y squared plus one times 
x squared plus 1 dy dx minus the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from 0 to 1, 1 over y squared plus 1 x squared plus y squared plus 2. And then maybe we'll put our dx dy up there. So like I just said, that's what happens from this first integral. So we do our partial fraction decomposition. So let's just telegraph it over here. We have one over x squared plus y squared plus two times x squared plus one. And we wanna rewrite that as a over x squared plus one plus b over x squared plus y squared plus two, where we're thinking of x as the variable and y is like a constant. So looking at this over here, we see that a will be equal to one over y squared plus one, and then b will be equal to negative one over y squared plus one. So that's a pretty straightforward computation, and like I said, we're gonna skip it. Okay, but now looking at this, we see that this second integral in the partial fraction decomposition looks a lot like our original integral, which we split off into this second integral right here. Their only difference is that x and y are switched. But that integrand is symmetric under switching x and y, which means that those two have the same value. And this is another hint that this integral was constructed and not discovered in that this simplification occurs so nicely. So like I just said, this integral and this integral have the same value, but they have opposite signs. So that means they cancel each other. And all we're left with is one half times this one, which I'll underline in red. And then next we see that that's a function of x times a function of y. So we can split it into the product of two integrals. So that means we have one half the integral from zero to one of one over t squared plus one dt, the whole thing squared. Where one of those copies of t is like the x integral and the other copy is like the y integral, but I've renamed it so I can write it squared like that. But now that integral is fairly easy to calculate. Let's maybe go ahead and do that. We have this is one half. That integrates to arctan of t evaluated from zero to one. We have to square that. Inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. Inverse tangent of 0 is 0. So we get pi over 4 squared is pi squared over 16 times 1 half is pi squared over 32, which is exactly what we needed for this second identity. And now we're ready to finish this thing off. So we're going to use one more trigonometric identity involving the inverse tangent. So we've got the inverse tangent of t equals pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 1 over t. Notice that's going to be helpful because that will make our given integral look like a combination of these two integrals which we just calculated. So we'll use this where t is equal to this square root of x squared plus 2. So let's see. This is going to give us pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2 times x squared plus 1 dx. So that's from this pi over 2 part. Notice that just gets rid of the inverse tangent in the numerator. And then we'll have minus the integral from 0 to 1 of arctan of our 1 over t term, but that's going to be 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2. And then in the denominator, we have the square root of x squared plus 2 times x squared plus 1 dx. Look at what we've got. We've got exactly both of these integrals that we already calculated. So here, this is going to be pi over 2 times, this is pi over 6, minus this integral, which is pi squared over 32. So I'll let you guys finish off the arithmetic, but what you end up with is 5 pi squared over 96. And that's a good place to stop.